In this tutorial, we're going to run you through how to design in a 2D space for a 2D side scroller. Now, designing in 2D space is quite different from designing in 3D space because you're only working with two planes of movement, the uh, X or Z um, axis and then the Y axis. So this is where something really important, snap to grid, comes into play. So you'll notice on the left side of your screen, you'll see this little magnet and an indicator to hold down on your D-pad. So if you hold down, you're turning on Snap to Grid. If you're on keyboard mouse, all you need to do is go ahead and click on it over here on the right-hand side, and then that'll turn uh, Snap to Grid on. And what this does is this creates within a um, snapped space. So you'll notice that now our uh, little cursor right here is perfectly moving in a straight line. And this becomes really useful when we're building in a 2D space where we need things to be in this straight line so that we can have a perfect path for our character to move on. The first thing you want to do in sort of anything that you're building is first build out the terrain. Elevation is the most important thing to first go ahead and build. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to make some elevation for our character. So we're going to uh, grab this terrain brush. We're going to use the, the add brush right here. And this directly adds terrain uh, to our space. So we won't really worry about any painting right now. We just need to start adding some elevation so that we have you know, obstacles um, for our player to move within. If you just have a totally flat space, it's quite boring for the player to walk through. You need to add in some different obstacles and a unique looking environment for them to actually enjoy going through. So let's go ahead and start doing that right here. We are going to go ahead and add some space here, and we might have, let's say that kind of at this point, you have to jump up a bit to get up to the, the next space, and maybe it goes up even higher. And then maybe there's a little jump right here that you have to clear, so we can um, just move this cursor over. And this is where Snap Grid really comes um, into form and becomes really useful, is the fact that you know this is all being done on a completely straight line. So this is a uh, severe, pretty severe drop, so maybe we want to make this less severe, and maybe we want to go back down here, and then again go up for a larger space. And we'll kind of, we'll end it right here on this little plateau where maybe this is our little boss battle area. So we've started to create sort of the stage for where our player moves within. The next thing we can do is actually start working on the painting of the terrain and uh, providing some design and form. Now a nice little tip is the biome brush can be a really nice and easy way of quickly populating your world for a 2D space. And it actually tends to look quite nice. So let's go over to this biome brush we're going to hit up on our um, D-pad, and we're going to select a biome here. So for this tutorial, we are going to um, set this 2D side scroller within the desert dunes. So I'm going to click on the desert dunes biome. And now I'm going to go ahead and ratchet up this brush all the way to 100%. We're going to zoom out here, and now we are going to go ahead and paint and what this does while painting is it also will drop props. And we don't really need to worry about painting uh, sticking to that same 2D space because the thing that really helps sell a game is to have kind of a foreground and a background. And that's what we're doing right here. We are having a foreground and a background where you'll be able to see sort of off in the distance different vegetation, and, uh, you know, we're, we can add in more things like rocks in the background as well. And you really don't need to worry about this being outside of, of the space you're actually going to be moving within. So we want to make some sort of backdrop over here so we're not just randomly going over the water. So that's where we can go back in and now add a bit more terrain here. Let's uh, instead use the expand brush this time. Let's change the shape to, uh, let's say, uh, a sphere and now we can go ahead and and sort of build this out we can go ahead and increase the intensity too so it builds a bit faster and maybe we're gonna have some mountains in the background let's say 
And here I'm just I'm building very basically right for for now. Obviously, design is something you can you can really spend hours on to make something look you know really great. But the most important thing, you know, the most important first thing you want to do is just add in that elevation, add in something that make, just makes your world look look more varied. So maybe this is where we have sort of a, a larger mount, mountain for the player to uh, to go within. All right, so that's that's starting to come together. So now let's go back into our prop mode and let's find, so there are places where um, vegetation or animals might have been placed in the path where a player needs to move within. So let's go ahead and move that vegetation. So here's the player's path. So they're going to go straight here. It looks like this tree is sort of in the way, but not really too much in the way. So that's, that's fine. Let's just move that a tiny bit out of the way. Let's do the same here. Maybe this one can be brought up a bit. You know, it's nice to have items in front of the player at times. That, that starts to add things like depth. And we're going to go ahead and just paint, that, paint over that grass we had right there. Uh, this rabbit is right in our way, so let's go ahead and put them down on the ground here. This tree does seem to be in our way, so we're going to move this tree right here. There seems to be a rock that's sort of just floating in midair. Uh, so we're going to increase the size of this rock and make this a nice feature. Rocks are really great for um, a background to, to just make some geological feature that, you know, looks pretty impressive and breaks up this terrain as well. So we're going to do that there. Now these trees seem to be a big problem. We have three of them, they're, or four of them, and they're all right in your path. So let's go ahead and move these out of the way. Let's maybe move one tree right here. Now this tree isn't on anything, but you're never really going to see it. So what we could do is, you know, if we had more time, we could line up this, this little tree here. So maybe your camera just goes right by the branches, and uh, they kind of obscure your view for a tiny bit. And let's bring this last one right here. Let's get this rabbit out of the way right here. And it uh, looks like that does it right there. Let's go back and just use our biome brush on this piece of terrain we made here to maybe make some, uh, make some more features that might go here. The nice thing about the biome brush is it also kind of understands the height of the uh, place you're building. So right here, it's kind of making the, the top part of the cliff. And if you ever don't like it, say, I don't really like this new terrain that the biome brush made, we can go back to our paintbrush, go over and uh, choose that material and, and paint over it. So things are starting to uh, come together here. The next thing we want to do is you want to define the actual path that the player is walking around in. So we're going to go back to our paintbrush. We're going to bring this up. And we are going to set the shape to be a square. We're going to continue to bring this down to something like just a 15 degrees. And we're going to use a new paint slot. So let's go ahead, go into our new paint slots. And let's find something that is very distinguishable as the sort of pathway the player is on. So maybe here we are going to do um, scorched path for, for this space, because a scorched path will stand out uh, very well. So now we can go ahead and paint. And we're painting in a straight line because we have Snap to Grid on, which makes our lives much easier as we're painting. So we just want to continue to paint, paint along this straight line. So there are two reasons why you're doing this. The first reason is so that we have a you know, bit of a different look for what the player is actually walking on. But the second and more important reason is this is, exa this is exactly showing where the player's path is going to run into. So now we can go back through this path and find some problem areas. Looks like right here, this is a problem area. We have a bit of a cliff that's going right into the player's path, which might obscure 
their ability to continue to walk. So we can go ahead and fix that with the terrain tool right here. And let's, uh, let's erode that terrain that we have so that that is outside of the, uh, that's outside of the path now. And it also looks like this rock is, it's actually just barely outside of our path, so that should be okay. So let's just go ahead and jump in a test and see how that works. So we have our character now moving along, and look how much better this already looks. Just with a few minutes and uh, some biome brush work, we've already created an environment that looks pretty interesting to walk within. And look at that, our player was able to get all the way up to the very top with no problem at all. So the last two things to consider are adding some more visual touches on here with the depth of field filter and also making it so that our player doesn't get lost in the environment right here. So our player has a brown tunic and uh, you know the desert is sort of brownish, yellowish looking. So we want our player to stand out a bit more so that they're, they don't fade into the background. That's something we, we don't want. And we can also sort of uh, blur out the background too. So let's go into edit and let's uh, first let's add a depth of field, field filter onto our player. So let's go into the brain of our player, add a new line here, and on the do side, let's create a new code tile. So let's go over one page to the camera section, click on that, click on camera effects, and click on depth of field. Depth of field is something that keeps whatever you want to be in focus, in focus and everything else blurred out. So we're not gonna add any modifiers on here, and let's just see how this works. So we go into test, and we have our character, and already we have this kind of nice effect where the background is sort of blurred out, and also the foreground as well. You can see that that has been blurred out a bit. So things are looking pretty good already with this. There are two filters that we will talk about. There's uh, more filters with depth of field that you should know about, but the two main filters are um, go over to modifiers here and you're going to see the far blur depth and the near blur depth. What these two are is the near blur depth tells you kind of how far away from the camera things that are sort of nearsighted will be blurred. So by default it should be about two or three meters but for instance we could say that the near blur depth is go over to number choose a new number let's say five and that means anything within the first five meters of the camera is gonna be blurred out. And then we can also set the far blur depth and let's say uh, this is going to be um, 25. And what that means is anything that is more than 25 meters away from the camera is going to be blurred out. There's also some focal depth there that you, you'll need to play around with if you want to get a very constrained space that isn't blurred out, but we won't worry about that. We're just going to set near blur depth to, to 5 and far blur depth to 25. Let's go into te to test again, and now we'll see that things in the foreground are much blurrier, and things in the background are a bit less blurry. So you can kind of play around with this until you get somewhere you like. The last thing we want to do is make our player stand out a bit more. So two things we can do there. We can first recolor their clothing and that's what we're going to do right now so let's go into character studio here let's choose clothing and now we can hit y over the chest to enter color mode so let's make his shirt um, a nice light bright blue and let's make his shirt trim let's say uh, maybe some maybe greenish color and then let's go down to his legs and let's make uh, the pants maybe a uh, kind of lighter orange maybe and we're just going to do that for now but already he's that's going to make him stand out quite a bit better you know blue does not fade into this uh, yellowish brownish background and the other thing we can do is attach a light bulb to them so let's go into our prop gallery let's uh, go ahead and find a light bulb So let's bring this light bulb out. And 
let's select our player, go to Character Studio, go to Attachments, add a new attachment. Let's use the World Picker on this light bulb right here. And let's attach this to his position. And that just attaches it to his position is kind of the, the base of his model. It's not attached to any one of his moving sockets. We don't want this light bulb moving around. So we'll attach this to his position. And now this light bulb, we can, we can move this around. But we've attached it to him. And what that means is as he moves around, this light bulb moves around too. Now, we still have Snap to Grid on, so we can't get this light bulb perfectly on the player. So let's turn Snap to Grid off. Now we can move it a bit more smoothly and kind of position it as we want it to. And let's also go into the modifiers for this light bulb. So let's uh, hold down the left bumper, go to Edit, Properties, Appearance, and Light. This is a special feature for light bulbs, but we can go ahead and change the color that's around him. So maybe we want it to be um, a bit of a orangish yellow tinge to the light. And we don't want the range to be 10 meters. Let's make the light's range only about 5 meters. So it's, it's really just on him. But what this does is this kind of puts a little pin light on our player right here. So those together, what does that look like? Let's go into test. And now we see this player who very clearly stands out over the map. You can definitely tell where your player is, and that's the most important thing. You don't want your player ever to get lost in the background or in the scenery. It makes it a bit frustrating for people playing your game if they don't really, if they lose sight of the character. So those are a few tips for how to design a 2D side scroller. There's a lot more to it. You can spend a lot more time here. We might spend time in between our tutorial series, maybe uh, building and finessing out this, this working space, and you can do the same. But this should give you the basics or the start of how to design out your space. So next, we're going to go on and move on to our enemies in our next video.